yes, I'll have you know, I did freak out when Wright announced their new lore book. More info on that next time. But that's not why we are here today. Last time you guys made sure to let me know that you are indeed interested in me covering the new Star Guardian cinematic. However, before I had the chance to do so, Riot released an actual Star Guardian story to go with it. So instead of checking out the cinematic alone, we will cover all the new Star Guardian lore in one go. So without further ado, let's get on it. Before we have a look at the new story that just appeared on Universe, it's better to quickly talk about the new skin bios. From these, we learned that Zoe was in an ancient group of the first Star Guardians. But unlike everyone else, she twisted her newfound powers to evoke chaos, and she had spent eons hunting down the Chosen of the First Star, aka other Star Guardians. But eventually she came to the Valorant City, where she is hoping to destroy the largest generation of Star Guardians yet. Unfortunately, one of these many victims of Zoe's madness were Rakan and Zaya. Both of them were destroyed in their first battle against Zoe, and then they were resurrected to fight against their allies. However, Rakan realizes that even though Zoe brought them back to spread evil, they used to be part of the good side, and Rakan is aware of what is happening. In fact, he is waiting for the right opportunity to strike back. He can even successfully mitigate the spreading of Zoe's corruption in Zaya's heart. But the price for doing so is slowly losing himself. On the other hand, Zaya seems happy about joining the evil side, and she is even blaming the Star Guardians for abandoning her to die. Here we should mention that before they died, Rakan and Zaya were originally in the same team as Misfortune, Ari and Nico. Speaking of which, during the battle where Zoe destroyed Rakan and Zaya, Nico went into hiding, and others thought that she died too. However, even though it seemed like Nico successfully got away from Zoe, Zoe was just using her to see where the other Star Guardians are hiding. That's why Nico is the only uncorrupted Star Guardian in the new skin line. That's all the info we got from their skin bios. Unfortunately, none of these new Star Guardians have their full canon bio among the older champions, which means that we don't know anything about their companions. And this brings us to the new story found on the universe called The Twilight Star. So let's get right into it. As it was with every previous Star Guardian story, it is told from the perspective of Lux, and it happens directly after the last story. Lux and Misfortune, whom Lux was now allowed to call Sarah, were on an afternoon patrol in a nearby park. In fact, it was Sarah herself who called Lux to go on a patrol with her, which was quite unusual, and Lux wanted to ask her so many questions. Was this how she normally patrolled? Was she bored? Why was she here? Why did she want Lux to join her? But in the end, Lux stayed quiet. They were marching at a quicker pace than normal. It was almost as if Sarah saw something that piqued her interest. But then, as they kept going, she finally started talking. Sarah thanked Lux for coming with her at such a short notice. Lulu sometimes scribbles visions that might be worth investigating, and the rest of Sarah's team wasn't exactly ready to go with her. Sarah explained that Ezreal had detention, even though he really wanted to go with them. Soraka had to work at Pantheon's bakery that day, Syndra had an astronomy class, and Ari was simply busy. As they continued their march, they finally arrived in the middle of the park, where Jenna was pushing Poppy and Jinx on a squeaky merry-go-round, and Lulu was swaying in a nearby swing set. Besides them, the park was empty and quiet. Sarah then told Lux that it's probably nothing, but still, they had a second look at Lulu's latest scribble. The picture perfectly framed the playground equipment. Above that, there were dozens of circles in the sky. Then, out of nowhere, Lulu pointed at the sky, and she shouted that she saw the Twilight Star. Lux let out a breath, presumably happy that it was just a star. Stars couldn't hurt them. But Poppy groaned that the Twilight Star was technically not a star. It was a planet. To which Lulu argued that everything had starlight in it, and Jenna nodded in agreement. Jinx asked Lulu what she was going to wish for, and Lulu replied, more stars. She wanted to see more stars. But then Jinx said that it wasn't dark yet, that the other stars weren't out yet. But to Lulu, that didn't matter. The other stars were always there even if you couldn't see them. Then, surprisingly, Poppy sided with Jinx. She added that it needs to get really dark before you can see the other stars in the city. Here, it wasn't the same as it was in the camp. But before Jinx could continue their arguing, Lux shouted at them from a distance, saying that they were all right. Then she turned back to Sarah. 
Sarah asked Lux if they were always like this, and Lux wasn't sure what she was referring to. It could be the arguing or just the talking among the team members. In Ari's team, they usually just went down to business. They would search the park and be done. And Lux couldn't tell if Sarah was disappointed or annoyed. And so she asked her if she meant the arguing, to which Sarah replied that she could feel the innocent from their team. Lux told her that the other team was led by Ari, so it was obvious why they always knew what to do. But the only person this team had was her. Sarah replied that innocent wasn't always a bad thing. And just like that, after a moment of remembering a distant dream, Sarah told Lux who Lux reminds her of. Lux was caught off guard there. She thought that she reminded her of Ari. And Lux genuinely didn't know which part of Ari was even similar to her. But Sarah let out a sharp laugh and said, no, that's not what she meant. And with that, Lux's hopes deflated like a balloon. Sarah continued that Lux reminded her of someone else. Someone she lost a long time ago. A person who also had pink hair. In her eyes, Lux was too loyal for her own good. And she was such a dreamer. She even said that Lux kinda reminded her of all of them. And with that, Lux realized that Sarah didn't lose just one friend. She lost an entire team. All Lux could ask back was, how did it happen? But before Sarah could answer, Lulu interrupted them by shouting that her wish came true. Lux quickly looked towards her team to see if everyone was safe and sound. All of them were still there in the park, surrounded with soft twilight. The street lamps turned on in an unsettling coincidence, and above them all, there was a swarm of twinkling lights. It was like a scene from a magical dream. Jinx mentioned that it was just like Poppy said. It wasn't dark enough. But the merry-go-round slowly came to stop, as Jenna, Poppy and Jinx looked up as well. It was getting dark fast. Too fast. They could barely see the trees around the edges of the park. Sarah and Lux started quickly walking back towards the playground, and Sarah added that these weren't stars. Lux squinted her eyes to focus on the sky, and after a moment she realized that the points of light were wavering, almost glistening. And as they got closer, Lux saw what Sarah meant. There were dozens of translucent bubbles in the air, reflecting the light from the lamps. Poppy exclaimed that the Twilight Star probably heard Lulu wrong. These weren't stars, they were bubbles. And just as she said that, one of the bubbles slowly descended down, as if it was following her voice. As the bubble got closer to the merry-go-round, where Poppy and Jinx were sitting, Jinx snorted that they were harmless. And with that, a trail of bubbles began to close in on her. But before it was too late, Lux threw her staff ahead of her, and she managed to cover both Poppy and Jinx in a protective shield. A couple of bubbles bounced off of this shield and popped, leaving behind a dark mist full of what looked like bugs or moths. After that, there was a high-pitched laugh, like the crackle of a child. Jinx whisper yelled, this can't be good. And Sarah joined her train of thoughts by pulling out her guns and firing at the sky. A wave of bubbles popped in a shower of black haze and twisted butterflies. Jenna immediately shouted at the team to not touch them, and she called upon the winds to gather all the bubbles together. After she did that, the high-pitched laugh changed to an annoyed groan. Then, in the middle of all the gathered bubbles, a dark portal opened, and what emerged from it stunned everyone. First, there were long tendrils. Then, there were unsettling squid eyes. When the creature fully emerged from the dark dimension, it was a gelatinous blob that unfolded into something between an evil octopus and demonic jellyfish. On Sarah's command, everyone attacked. Shiro and Kuro fired eagerly. Poppy swung her hammer around through the mass of bubbles, and it knocked the now angry and disoriented jellyfish from the center. Next, the bubbles started drifting towards Sarah. To protect her, Lux tried to hit the jellyfish with a beam of light. But among all the glistering bubbles, the jellyfish was hard to hit, and the beam missed. The bubbles were now too close to Sarah, and there wasn't time to save her. But out of nowhere, tiny Lulu pushed her aside and took the hit. One of the bubbles touched Lulu's cheek and popped. Seconds later, she was enveloped by Inky Cloud, which made her fall asleep. As the last of the bubbles popped above, under the fire of both Sarah and Jinx, Lux dove forward to pick up Lulu off the ground and bring her to safety. After all the bubbles were gone, a new portal opened above the jellyfish. And as all the dark magic was sucked back into the portal, the jellyfish disappeared too. Moments later, everything was quiet again. At first, Lux tried to wake up Lulu by shaking her, but when that didn't work, she pulled out her staff and released a blinding light that made Lulu mumble. She quietly whispered that someone was lost. Then her eyes closed tighter as if she had nightmares, and all she let out was, dark now. 
But then Lulu immediately bolted upright, her blue eyes wide open. She looked around as if her teammates weren't even there, as if she was somewhere else. She's on her way, Lulu said. And of course, Lux had no idea what she was talking about. The only thought that shot to her mind was that Ari would know what to do. With that, Lux turned towards Sarah. But Sarah replied, no. Trying to keep smile of optimism on her face, Lux continued that of course Ari will know. And she asked Sarah if she could call her. But again, Sarah replied that she couldn't. Lux simply asked why. And Sarah answered that they were not talking right now. Lux was confused. Surely this was more important than girly issues. But Sarah revealed that there was something more behind it. During the slumber party, which is what the last story was about, that night, Ari was supposed to come too. But at the last minute, she said she had something to take care of, and they didn't see Ari since. The look of fear in Sarah's eyes made Lux nervous, and a hundred more questions flooded her brain. Where did Ari go? What was coming? Was they strong enough to face it? She wanted to ask her, but she couldn't. And this is where the story ends. Surprisingly, even though the story only showed us Zoe's companion, and none of the new Star Guardians, it indirectly explained the cinematic too. Because during the previous Star Guardian story, that was about a sleepover, Ari ventured out to find her missing team. That's why only Ari appeared at the end of the cinematic. While she was about to fight a great enemy, everyone else was enjoying cookies at Lux's home. Also, to explain what's even happening in the cinematic, since Zoe is hunting down the Star Guardians, she used Nico as a bait to lure out Ari and the rest. Which, as you can see, it worked. Also, there is a cool scene where Rakan is absorbing Zaya's darkness to save her. Again, this was explained at the beginning of this video. Rakan wasn't entirely corrupted. He is still aware of what is happening. I just wanted to show you that it appears in the cinematic too. Other than that, the cinematic is just a nice action-packed movie, and there is not much else to say about it. The only thing that was left unanswered is... How does Urgot tie into this? <laughs> hey, did you know that we have social media and Twitch where we talk about other league facts and stories? And did you know that we have need mugs and shirts too? The links to all of that will be below. And as always, thank you, come again.